Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of What's Driving Token Prices. I'm your host, Katie Talati, Director of Research at ARCA. For those of us joining us for the first time, I'm responsible for identifying and analyzing digital asset and blockchain opportunities for ARCA's funds. As part of our research, my team and I examine token prices and the market events that act as catalysts for price change. Based on our research and market events over the past week, here are some notable price uh, token price movements and what we think drove those moves. As a reminder, this commentary is not intended to be investment advice, investment research, or an investment recommendation. Please consult your investment professional for your own circumstances. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition um, of What's Driving Token Prices. I'm calling in from Masari Mainnet in New York City, um, where there are lots of projects and happenings on the ground here. Um, Today, we you know haven't had a ton of actual project-specific news. Unfortunately, it's been driven very much by the macro picture with the Federal Reserve raising um, rates 75 basis points just today. Uh, so to start this week, we're going to talk about Voyager. So um, earlier this year, Crypto Voyager, um, or Crypto Exchange Voyager, uh, halted withdrawals on their exchange in the aftermath of the Terra Unwind um, and has since entered into bankruptcy proceedings. A number of entities have been circling and considering picking up uh, Voyager's assets and customer lists, including Alameda Research. Earlier this week, court um, ordered Alameda to repay a $200 million collateralized loan to Voyager that was arranged prior to the bankruptcy. Alameda offered Voyager a a line of credit post-bankruptcy to help fill the balance sheet hole and prevent a bank run scenario as they are also equity holders in Voyager. According to the court, Voyager can return the collateral owed to Alameda as promptly as practicable. So uh, based on that news, Voyager is, or Voyager's token VGX is down 7% week over week. Next up, we have Cardano. Um, so today, the layer one blockchain Cardano um, is undergoing a hard fork called the, called the SEAL. Um, the network upgrade is expected to increase Cardano's throughput and lower transaction fees. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Cardano, they were created. It was created by co-founder, Ethereum co-founder Charles Hoskinson, um, and its architecture or the platform has become, undergone uh, academic and peer review um, research uh, in, in kind of like a research fashion. Um, as such, pro- progress on the blockchain has been fairly slow, and the ecosystem is seeing more traction in the last year, boasting over 100 projects. Um, Despite the hard fork, Cardano is down 6% for the week. All right, last but not least, we have Helium. Um, So the decentralized wireless network is, um, was very exciting to announce that yesterday they are announced, are launching Helium Mobile, um, which is going to be a direct-to-phone 5G service in partnership with T-Mobile. The agreement between Helium and T-Mobile is set for five years. Last week, news also came out that Binance US was essentially short four and a half million um, HNT tokens after there was like an account error with their exchange. Um, kind of to give you more detail on that, what specifically happened is that um, they were allowing for deposits of another token in the Helium ecosystem called Mobile, and they were crediting it as a one for one with Helium. And as a result, uh, what happened is is that their exchange ended up having uh, no more Helium on hand um, because the value of Mobile was so much um, lower. Um, so many are now speculating that Binance is actually going to need to go out and purchase these off the open market to make users whole. Um, and it's quite a few HNT tokens versus um, kind of what like the market liquidity is at uh, the current uh, time. So uh, with all this, HNT is up 5.9% week over week, which is great in a week where we had a lot of volatility following the merge. And like I said, kind of like the Federal Reserve um, meeting today. And that's all I have for you guys this week. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed our insights. Tune in here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear what's driving token prices. 